So I think we're due for a little refresher on just graphing some basic quadratics. And remember the name of a quadratic when graphed, we call a parabola. This worksheet has some review of solving quadratics and then solving with complex solutions on the back too. Um, we might do a couple of these in this lesson, but you know that's kind of just a synthesis of the previous two lessons. So um, remember that you should be familiar with how to solve quadratics through all the algebraic methods. And then now that we remember how to use complex numbers, we should be able to also find solutions that are not pretty. So remember, if you are graphing a parabola, fingers crossed that it's in what we call vertex form. Vertex form is awesome because you can see the vertex. So the vertex is at the point, I can't, you can't see it because my screen is there, but it's at h comma k, and then that gives you a good center point for your parabola. And then you could use a little bit of mental math to figure out at least one point, I use one symmetrical point, set of points on the left and right of the vertex. You could use your calculator's table to find some nice points. Um, frankly, it's easier if you don't use the table though, and I'll show you what I mean. Remember, parabolas are U-shaped. We're gonna learn again about absolute value graphs, which are V-shaped. These are not them. Um, we need to know if they open up or down. We need to know where the vertex is, and we need to familiarize ourselves with the concept of the axis of symmetry. So the vertex is what I consider the center point of the parabola. It's just the center symmetry point, which tells you that the line of symmetry is a vertical line that slices straight through the parabola. So whatever the x value is of the vertex, that also happens to be the equation for the line of symmetry. So x equals 2, 7, x equals negative 4, and so on and so on and so on. So I'm really like... I'm a, a graphic learner, so I like to see pictures, I like to see formulas, I like to see where the parts of the formula come from the picture. I have to kind of put it all together to really understand it. So, What I would like you to do when you're graphing is to give me the location of the vertex and then at least two other points, and if you're smart about it, you'll choose very wise points. <laughs> so what I do is I draw a little t-table off to my side, and I'm going to give myself three ordered pairs and I'm going to write them down in a logical order for me. So since the vertex is the middle point to my parabola, I'm going to put the vertex right here in the middle. So the vertex, remember, is h comma k, but the h has a built-in negative in the formula. So it's 2 comma 1. And then if you think about that, so if I plot a point at 2, 1. Symmetrical points would be evenly spaced to the left and to the right of the vertex. So whatever's over here at x equals 1 and whatever's over here at x equals 3, they should be the same height on my parabola. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strategically choose x equals 1 and x equals 3 as my other two points. Now, yes, you could grab a graphing calculator, type in your function into y equals, and look at the table that way. But look how easy this is to do without the graphing calculator. If you put a 1 right here, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, but then you're going to square it. So either way, you get a 1 right here. And a 1 plus 1 gives you an output of 2. Guess what happens when you plug in a 3? <laughs> 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. You should notice that if you are correct in your choosing, and you did symmetrical points along the vertex, these two ordered pairs should have the same output, the same y value. And then let's look at y. 1, 2 is right here, and 3, 2 is right here. That's going to produce a really symmetrical parabola, which is what they're supposed to be. All right, just a note of caution. I am graphing on a tablet. <laughs> it's very difficult, so you got to give me a little grace, okay? So same thing here. Ordered pairs. Um, I want three of them. One of them should be the vertex. And if you're smart about it, you'll do it the same way every time, and then you don't have to think real hard. So this time the vertex is that, remember, there's a built-in negative in the formula, so it's x minus negative 3. So negative 3 comma negative 2 right there and it's up to you what what x values you're going to plug in um but i'm going to go symmetrical again i'm going to go negative four and negative two so a negative four plus three is negative one negative one squared is one but be careful there's a negative out here so i have negative times one minus two so that's negative three if you don't trust your mental math you know at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> Use your calculator. All right, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. But there's a negative in front, so negative 1 minus 2 is also negative 3. And I'm A-OK -okay with those matching because they're supposed to match, right? The y values. Thus the symmetry. All right, negative 4, negative 3. And something kind of unusual about this parabola 
is I'm noticing that he is opening downwards, which now that I look back at the equation, I go, duh, the a value was negative 1, which means my parabola will be opening upside down. It is reflected across the x-axis, to be particular about it. So here, my vertex in the middle. Oh, gosh, ugly. All right, so my vertex is at 3, 2 because of the h and the k. And then again, I'm going to pick symmetrical points because it makes sense to me. So I'm going to pick 2 and 4. If I plug in a 2, that's 1 after I square it. But negative 2 times 1 plus 2 gives me nada. Same thing's going to happen with a 4. There we go. 2, 0, 4, yeah, <laughs> 3, 2, and 4, 0. Now this time, I, oh, gosh. Oh, that was not supposed to happen. Um, <laughs> I have a pair, oh, jeez. All right, you know what? Jeez. Okay. Need like a training on drawing. Oh, so bad. Okay, so I was supposed to graph. It's clearly a reflected parabola. And it was supposed to appear narrower because of the A value being a 2. I didn't do a good job. What's new? All right, so the next one. X value at... <laughs> vertex value at 2, negative 4. So if I pick symmetrical points again, I'm going to go 1 and 3. Um, one, negative 1 squared is 1. 3 times 1 minus 4 is negative 1. So is this guy. So 1, negative 1. 2, negative 4. And 3, negative 1. So this time... Oh, gosh, so bad. <gasps> that, okay. Bad. Okay, I did a very bad job. But again, I'm on the tablet. All right, so it was supposed to be clearly an up-opening parabola because the A value is positive, but it's supposed to be very, very narrow because it's going up three times as fast. So the vertical stretch of three. My bad. All right, so fractions, you know, they're not the worst thing in the world. Um, it's When I choose these symmetrical points, I'm choosing things that I want to choose. So if if you would prefer to choose a different number but still be symmetrical, you can do that. So this time the vertex is at negative 4, 4. And the reason I talk about picking other symmetrical points is because of this 1 half, negative 1 half. So if I were to go negative 3 right here, I'm going to get 1 squared or negative 1 squared. And then I'm going to have to multiply by negative 1 half plus 4. If you're not really excited about graphing or working with the decimal, then just choose a, an even number that's symmetrically placed. So you could go like negative 2. And um, z uh, I went the wrong way. Negative six and negative two. So it doesn't matter. But if you're looking for symmetry, you just gotta make sure you choose symmetrical points. You know what, guys? I'm not afraid of decimals today. So I'm going negative five and negative three. Oh yeah. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. Negative five. Um. So plus four would be negative one squared. It's one, but we have a negative one half times the one plus four. So that would be 3.5. And we're going to get the same y value over here. So negative 5, 3.5. Look, they even gave me little halvesy marks. Woohoo! And you're going to notice, because the a value being negative, it's reflected. I already knew that. But the a value is 1 half, which means, ugh, gosh. <laughs> Ugh, use your imagination. Um, it was supposed to be wider than normal. So if a, a number greater than one vertically stretches it, or upside down vertically stretches it, a vertical compression is what's happening here. It's like going up half as fast as it normally did. All right, the next one's going to be very similar. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. All right, let's talk about, I'm going to do like a few of these with you, if you don't mind. We're still going to use those algebraic methods, but um, for many of these questions on this part of the worksheet, they are going to have complex answers, which means we have to worry about reducing radicals with eyes. Oh, no. That's the only difference, right? So here, um, I'm going to solve by taking a square root. So I have to isolate. So we're going to subtract 5. And then divide by 10. And I know you're going to want to, like, do a decimal, but we can't. It's negative 76 over 10, which does reduce to negative 38 over 5. And now we're going to square root. And you can see where the problem is going to happen, right? 
So we're going to have n equals plus and minus, but we got to remember, first of all, how do you square root fractions? How do you rationalize fractions? And then what do you do when one of those square roots has a negative in it? Ugh. So let's talk about right here, the square root of negative 38 over the square root of 5. Um, the first issue is neither one of those reduce. This one reduces with an I. We'll talk about that in a second. But we also have to rationalize this guy. So I have to hit top and bottom by the square root of 5, which gives me, uh, I already did this, 190. Okay, so the square root of negative 190, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just going to give me a 5. Turns out 190 does not reduce by any perfect squares. So that's interesting. But the thing that I do have to remember is that it is negative 1 times 190. And wasn't the square root of negative 1i? So if I call this i and then the square root of 190 over 5, that is an acceptable way to write that answer. For most textbooks, they will write it as plus and minus the square root of 190 over 5, and then they'll throw the i off to the side. <laughs> Um, just make sure he's not underneath the radical and that he's not in the denominator. So either of those answers are great. I mean, they're not great. They're as great as they can be. <laughs> Frankly, for me, I would have accepted the answers of plus and minus square root of 38 over 5. As long as you knew to pull the i out, I would have been okay with that. Because actually, there's a lot of debate in the mathematical community right now about, like, you don't even have to rationalize denominators anymore. So I don't know. I teach it to you just in case you get, you have to. So let's talk about how we complete the square, even if the solutions have i. So we're going to move the constant over first. We end up with x squared plus 10x plus something. And then we're going to subtract that 91 over. But then we have to balance out our completing the square equation. So in this blank, half of 10 is 5. 5 squared is 25. And sure enough, our solutions will be something negative over here. So this guy factors into x plus 5 squared. He is completed. Yay. And then negative 91 plus 25, I'm going to cheat, is negative 66. So now when I'm ready to take the square root of both sides, I do have to worry about two things. I have to remember the plus or minus, and I have to remember how to simplify the square to negative 66. So x plus 5 equals plus and minus 66 as a number, as a radical, does not reduce. No. Uh, so the only thing I can do is think of it as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 66, which leaves me with i pulled out times the square root of 66. So final answers would be negative 5 subtracted over, and then we're going to add and subtract i times the square root of 66. Isn't that lovely? So a lot of my Algebra 2 kids, I think I told this in another lesson, they said, oh, it's just like poking the eye out of the square root. I'm like, okay, it's not at all what you're doing, but if that's how you want to remember it, that's fine. Um, the idea is all the algebraic process is the same. The only thing that's different is when you get to the simplification of the square root, you might have to worry about removing an I, quote unquote, because you're taking the square root of a negative number. Um, these next few examples here, it's I'm going to leave these all for you to do because it says, like, do whatever method you want. And you want to be careful about um, what's appropriate. Is it appropriate to square root? Maybe not. Is factoring possible? Maybe not. Um, not all of these have complex answers, I will warn you. Some of them have good old-fashioned rational answers that are also real. So uh, happy homework time for you. All right. Enjoy.